So I'm going to show you the different ways you can sync up any bit of audio to the tempo that you want it to be in in FL Studio. Purposely done here is grab four different bits of audio. They may or may not fit together, but they're all at slightly different tempos. And what we're going to do is set the track to a tempo that none of these are as well. So I've just dragged them all in and they're all from Splice. So I've just dragged them in so you can see the file names here if there's anything you want to go and pick up. My tempo is currently set at 130 at the moment. And as you can see, everything is off on kind of strange timings. Even this, it happens to be snapped right at the edge, but it doesn't you know, conform to what it should do. None of these are 90, but they're all kind of close to it with the exception of this being 80. So let's bring this down to 90 and that might be a good place where we can show everything being pulled down. So we're just gonna take our tempo at the top and drag it down. And sure, we can say yes to restretch all channels. Everything's still gonna be out of time anyway. So the very first thing, we're gonna get the break on point and I'll show you a really, really simple way to do that. What we do here, we're just gonna hold command option, whatever you want to call it and zoom ourselves in and if we right click on this little green button here and if we right click on this little green button here we can just solo out the drums here now what we're going to do here is just use the time stretch drag and put that to where it should be we know this drum beat is going to be roughly four bars based on the fact that it just tips over the five and it should be a bpm of 89 and we're at 90. we need to go just above here we've got this little dual arrow here and when we hover over it we can see it says stretch audio when resizing audio clips this is an audio clip we need to make sure that guy is switched on and we can go to the end of our piece of audio when that's switched on and we can just drag it. Now, if I try and drag it to the five here, we have a little problem if we zoom ourselves in a touch more. We can see it's now just short, so it's gonna drift off over time as we go. When we go to the end again, if we just hold down option, we can just drag that into where we want it to be. If we zoom right in now, we can see that is bang on point, exactly where we want it to be. So we've now got our drums synced to the tempo. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They are my music distributor and they allow me to get my music on all of the major stores for a simple subscription cost that an independent artist can easily afford. Nevertheless, there is a discount off of your first year of unlimited music distribution in the description and the link below where you can find out more information about getting your music out to all those major platforms using DistroKid. On to the next method. Okay, so next underneath here, we'll just click to bring this to light. We could do the same thing here, guessing it's probably going to be eight bars and just drag this up here. But there are some other ways we can do it. We know it's 92 BPM, right? Up on the top of any audio clip, there's this little audio icon just here. And you'll see how the mouse changes when we hover over it. If we right click on that, we can do some fancy stuff. For example, we can do fit to tempo. When we click that, it'll give us some options of how to do it. At the minute, it says estimated 80.5. We know that's wrong because it's written in the file for us that it's 92 BPM. We can go down to type in BPM and just go 92 and hit the click on the little tick and boom, it's done it for us exactly where it should be. So now we've got drums and our first sample perfectly synced to time. Look at our next one. What can we do here? Here we can manipulate it in some more fancy ways. So we're going to right click again and we're going to use time warp sample. Now it's opened up something called new time, which allows us to adjust the time of the sample, but also bits in between it. So we can go to the end of the sample, for example, and take it right back so it fits within that time frame but notice it didn't move anything else in the sample only the very end portion so now if we were to play it back we'll play it back towards the end it will play the last part really quickly it just squeezes it in this way we can look at the different transient sections of the sample and we can pull them into ranges that maybe will fit a little nicer like right in between bars or so they're snapped right onto the grid and this can really help the ebb and flow of a sample that maybe is a little bit more lively and moves around more than you would like normally once you're done with your adjustment you can do send to playlist it'll drop your newly edited version in there for you. We're gonna bring it up to our track here that's already been set. It 
this helps us get all those transient parts of those key moments landing on beat when normally they would ebb and flow. Let's have a look at the last one where we've got a quick vocal sample. I wanna run away. Here we're going to use that right click option again and we're just going to hit fit to tempo. We're going to choose 90 as the project and it's made the tiniest adjustment. I wanna run away. I wanna run away, but you keep breaking. Now that adjustment seems tiny because it's done this based on the audio itself and the transients within it. If we just redo it, we'll see it's made the smallest adjustment and just pulled things ever so slightly into the transient timing of that piece of audio. I wanna run away, I wanna run away, but you keep breaking. If it's not quite right for you, we could use new time to keep tweaking it, adjusting it, and making sure everything sits exactly on the point we want it to be. Run away, run away. 